The Resistance Revival Chorus is made up of women and non-binary performers, educators, activists who wanted to explore their musical side, and musicians who wanted to explore the activist inside of them. All types of people who had one common goal in mind breathe joy into the resistance and center the voices of people in the movement. I teach ethics and I've taught literature and history and I sing. And so this felt like, oh, here's an opportunity to sort of marry all of these competencies and bring it to bear in something that feels really important and something that feels really pivotal an ensemble that was singing for justice. The Resistance Revival Chorus was co-founded by now manager Ginny Suss and others after their work organizing the original Women's March in January 2017. They had been inspired by what they experienced at the Women's March. The words were in the streets and the signs were in the streets and the people were in the streets, but really wanting to ensure that the tradition of music was in the streets. I thought that was an amazing opportunity. Our very first performance was a flash mob on Times Square, and we were all dressed in white, singing and clapping, and people didn't know what was happening, but we knew this was something that was bigger than us. And after that, it just took off. We performed at Carnegie Hall and at the Grammys, at lots of marches. With over 60 members available to participate, the chorus combines performance tours with educational workshops and public actions in support of activists. They even produced a 2020 release, This Joy. When the Resistance Revival Chorus started, it was such an exciting way for me to use my activist voice in a different way through music, um, and I've been singing my whole life. So that was really lovely um, to be able to work with the Desai Foundation and also the Resistance Revival Chorus to feel like I'm giving people a voice that don't have one. As the Girls Club, we often have amplifying events around social justice hosted in this space. We've had everyone from Michelle Obama to Stacey Abrams to Colin Kaepernick in this very room, actually. And there was an event here where Jenny Suss was in attendance. And I said, I love the chorus. I just want to be involved. And she's like, come. It's been such an incredible blessing to be able to express the work that I'm doing on the day to day in a creative capacity. And especially when you're actually really trying to uplift young people in doing the work. So it's great to be able to do the work myself um, in community with other amazing women. So let's just sing all the way through the first part. Wherever we'll we go, how do we bring part. together One, community two, three, to be able to celebrate three, in the moments of joy? that we experience and to be able to mourn and grieve the indignities, the inequities that people face, that's what we're doing. We're not showing up at a venue to do a show, right? We're showing up wherever we've been asked to come to bring communities together. They used to host nights like Resistance Revival Nights where they would invite guest artists to come and perform with them and was just so in love with everyone that I met that I was like, can I join? <laughs> the song is really just an invitation for individuals, uh, especially if they come from an underrepresented or marginalized community in this country. I just wrote this as an encouragement for people to just find a light, shine that light, share that light, and create more balance in this country. They are filled with tremendous, beautiful energy and joy in their singing. It's not only the music, but it's the joy of bringing that message. The link between music and activism, which is such a strong historical link. And how can music be used for activism and to promote social justice? For special events like this one, we will do a panel. This is a community that's very invested in uh, social justice issues. So when I came across the Resistance Revival Chorus, I thought this might be a great way to serve our community better. That We can use music and we should use music 
to teach and to inspire. I've been on panels and people are like, why you keep talking about that racism thing? Can't you talk about something else? And I'm like, sorry, I can't. But a song allows people to hear something different. So I think there's this beautiful thing of music and having people beginning to hear. And I just wanted to say the folks who are on the other side singing that or hearing that who are experiencing the oppression, it is still painful even in the claps and the applause at the end. Say when Abby Dobson breathes that first breath of Say Her Name, we all hold hands and just think about the message. And it pretty much takes Tatiana my breath away. Tatiana Jefferson. Sandra Bland. Sandra Bland. Brianna Taylor. It really is a call out to freedom. These women have become our ancestors now. And we owe it to them to continue to fight for freedom. When you see other women do things, it gives you just the motivation to try things yourself. There are women who have become my mentors without even knowing it. The movement of human rights, civil rights, has been going on long before I've been on this planet. And I can reach out and touch it. There was a time my grandmother couldn't vote, and now I'm going to the polls with her. My father marched in the March on Washington with Martin Luther King. And in the song, I hope, I just needed to express that at the point in which you get tired, someone else will continue it for you and to continue to encourage each other because it's working and we need it so badly. Oh,